Welcome everyone. Uh, we come back to our supply chain network design part two. And previous uh, tutorial we have is introduce the basic structure of a supply chain network design problem formulated as a minimum cost network flow problem. And this <coughs> uh, tutorial, we're going to add a couple uh, more example uh, features into the model. For example, a couple things. F first, we each one of the uh, depot or hub we're trying to open, we could have a, a fixed charge <coughs> cost. Okay, so this is what we call the fixed charge network problem. <coughs> and also, if a uh, uh, certain depot can afford to have expansion if we decided to, so. Um, <coughs> So a couple add features in this example. First is if we uh, we add in a couple more candidates for uh, hub or uh, depot, and we decide which one to stay open, which one to close, based on the fixed charge of the cost. If we keep it open, we have a fixed cost. If we are trying to close it, we save those costs. All right, and also. <coughs> Right now, uh, we're trying to say, hey, if we have uh, several, uh, one of those depots, we're trying to, we have a capability to expand his capacity and with uh, some uh, involved cost, what will be the best choice for those situation? Either to open another uh, depot or just expand the current uh, existing one we have. So let's go through this problem description pretty quick. First, with the, uh, we still have a two factory right here, Liverpool and Brighton. Uh, also, now, instead of a depot, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. We're adding bistros and New Hampton uh, into Northampton into uh, the candidate set. And the throughput for each one of those are listed as the previous example, which is adding these two potential depot. Okay, we can actually choose uh, four out of six depot to open. So maximum uh, depots to open is four out of six candidate. <coughs> but each one of them has a cost, a uh, fixed cost, if we are uh, trying to open that particular uh, place. All right, so Next is, we can also have option to expand the capacity of a Birmingham from 20,000 currently to, uh, uh, by, by 20,000 ton, uh, uh, on top of a 50,000 ton he has, up to, so up to 70,000 ton, with a cost of $3,000, and for that expansion, all right? For the uh, retail store or customer, we still have six of them and has a certain demand needs to be satisfied. Of course, with the two more uh, potential depots, we now have a little bit more uh, information to add in. So we have two factory, okay, like before. <coughs> and now we have six depot possibly supplying all the capacity. Uh, uh, demand from the retail store. All right. S uh, problem formulations about the same. Uh, factories, we have two, okay. But depots, we have one, two, three, four, five, six total. Customer retail store, we have six as well. And the city is also the uh, unions of uh, factories. Uh, plus uh, depot plus the retail store. The input parameter is about the uh, same uh, except the last one. The cost to for the transportation and the supply is maximum capa capacity for those, those two factory. <coughs> Through for each one of the depot, throughput for uh, each one of the depot has a capacity <coughs> and demand from the retail store and customer C. Finally, this one is new, the open cost, which is <coughs> uh, 
the cost to open a depot D in dollar amount. <clears throat> in terms of decision variable, we also adding two uh, more uh, decision variable. They are binary. Of course, we have to still have the original flow from the source to the destination on the arc. And this is the amount trying to transport from point uh, source to the destination. And the open means if the depot D is open, then we have a zero or one. Okay. Also for the Birmingham, uh, if it, this needs to be expanded or not. So zero means not expand. One means expand. Objective function has, like before, minimum total transportation cost in the first part, then the open uh, cost uh, in the second part, and the third part is the expansion cost. Remember, the open and the expansion are binary variables, 0 and 1. A couple more constraint added to the formulation. Uh, we still have the top four, just like before. The factory output, customer demand, okay. Uh, factory output is total factory uh, output is uh, less than or equal to the total capacity of the factory. Customer demand means total incoming flow uh, to customer C has to satisfy the demand for that particular customer. Depot flow, this is a flow conservation constraint. Uh, <clears throat> and total incoming flow, okay, incoming to the depot D is has to be equals to the total outgoing flow to uh, from depot D to the des any all the destinations summing up together. So this is what we call the <clears throat> flow conservation constraint. And here we have a depot capacity. Uh, all but uh, Birmingham because Birmingham can be expanded. So therefore here is for all the city any source going into depot D has to be less than or equal to the uh, depot capacity times open or not. So if the <coughs> depot is not open okay so open equals to zero and right hand side becomes zero so there's no flow can be coming into this particular depot except Birmingham <coughs> so the D is in the D all the depots minus Birmingham and that's what it is and we separate this uh, out uh, a depot capacity constraint just for the Birmingham uh, depot so the total uh, incoming flow uh, total incoming flow to the Birmingham less than equals to the throughput originally currently have with the Birmingham plus 20,000 if the expansion is decided to carry on okay so again the expand is a binary variable equals to zero or one finally this is open depots. We only want a f maximum four out of six depots are open. However, we also decided Birmingham and London are the two we want to stay open for sure. So basically we want to choose among the other four, just choosing two out of the other four to open. And this is one of the new features we can add it to the basic supply chain network problem to make it more practical. Uh, the Python portion fairly similar to the previous one and we just want to go <coughs> go ahead with this uh, adding the uh, loading the library loading the input parameter is the same thing here is the model deployment it's fairly simple what we have is <coughs> uh, first we create a model this is a uh, supply network design 2 and uh, using model as abbreviation or handler and for the depots we adding uh, 
a variable called arc uh, based on arcs, number of arcs we have, and the cost, uh, the objective is the cost times the flow. Okay. Second, we define a binary variable, okay, called uh, based on the number of depots we have, and the objective is the open cost for each one of those. So it's open cost times open. And the open itself is a binary variable, okay? <clears throat> Finally is the single uh, variable instead of an add variable as a pearl, it's add variables. Objective function is the 3,000 times whatever expanded or not it is. So it is also a binary variable for just for the Birmingham. Here we illustrate how to set up a lower bound for one of our <coughs> one of our decision variable. For this decision variable binary variable open, I want Birmingham and London's is lower bound equals to one. So their shore is gonna be open. And <coughs> the constraint is uh, open cost for the Newcastle plus open cost for exterior are if they are uh, minus if we close them and that will be the saving from closing those two okay <coughs> uh, going through the uh, constraint right now a constraint the first constraint is still the factory total supply capacity okay like we had it before summing up all the factory outflow from the quick sum sum of the flow from the factory to everybody else the star means everybody else is less than equals to the total supply for the factory and the factory in the factories okay <coughs> second is the com uh, customer demand uh, satisfaction constraint the customers okay all the incoming to the customer sum of the incoming flow to the customer has to be equal to the demand of the customer. Number three is the flow conservation constraint we talked about before. So this is outgoing floor uh, flow uh, should be equals to the incoming flow. Uh, so this is uh, flow conservation. Whatever comes in has to go out. The depot uh, throughput constraint, like we said it before, first we define the depot throughput for everybody but the Birmingham. So here the set of all but Birmingham set is all the depot minus the Birmingham. Okay, so it's a list. So this list, we did it like a home, uh, previous uh, example, all the incoming flow to that, all, some of the, all the ink outgoing flow to the <coughs> from the depot has to be less than or equal to the throughput uh, for that particular depot times open for that depot if it's open or not this is zero and one if it's open this will be one times the throughput if it's not open, it will be zero times the throughput so the right hand side becomes a zero in that case there's no <coughs> outgoing for allowed to go into the uh, depot. So with this depot throughput multiplied by a binary variable combined with the flow conservation constraint, we will shut down the entire depot if we stay uh, we decided that particular depot is not going to be open. Last one will be, uh, next one will be f just for the Birmingham capacity. Uh, we can either choose all the <coughs> incoming flow, flow to the Birmingham should be less than or equal to the throughput plus possibly 20,000 uh, <coughs> 20, more tons if I decided to expand. So expand is zero and one <coughs> variable. If it's zero, then there's no, no extra 20,000 tons of uh, capacity. If it's yes, equal to one, then we have 
additional capacity of 20,000 on the right hand side. Next one is the last one. We only want <coughs> maximum of four possible okay depots to use in the stay open so open dot sum is the sum of the all the open variables uh, e uh, less than equal to four all right so i'm going to <coughs> go through this i think we have adding constraints rounding those cells finally we can do the optimization actually fairly quick okay and takes about <coughs> less than 300 a second so and we get the optimal solution uh, 174 thousand dollars as my total objective function value we can do the okay list of uh, open uh, depot based on the open variables as uh, Birmingham, Lex, uh, London's Exeter, uh, and No Hampton. Okay, and also expand the uh, uh, Birmingham as a final decision. And then we can list it out or the <coughs> solution, optimal solution for from this integer mixed integer programming problem. So here what we have is you, you can see that we don't have any, uh, if I define the variable to point of view, and for the flow variable, we didn't need to have uh, uh, specify as an integer solution. And the apartment structure is so-called total unimodular. So therefore, uh, <coughs> the right-hand side is integer, and the... Uh, and the constraint is also uh, integers as a node and arc incident matrix. So we guarantee our solution for directly solving for LP will be an integer solution. However, we're adding a two binary cons uh, variable into this model <coughs> to uh, trying to model the so-called fixed charge uh, uh, network flow problem and also with a certain limitation on number of depots open and some of the depot we already decide pre-decide they have to be open so this is a little bit more practical than the previous ex uh, tutorial example and we conclude this uh, video and we talk about uh, so-called portfolio management problems and or portfolio selection problem next we'll see you in the next video bye bye